What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Hello, everyone. Thank you for clicking on this video. If uh, you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the like button if you like the content that I'm uh, about to present to you. My name is Ebo Sosa. You're, you're tuning into the Ebo Sosa show. I uh, normally do these tapings, these bootleg tapings around 2, 3 in the morning, but right now it's 7 p.m. and I uh, decided to do it because there's more light out. But it's hot as a mug out here in California. You're probably going to end up seeing me sweating here in a minute because I uh, don't want to turn the air on for risk of the audio being disturbed. Um, reason why I'm doing this video is because of three things that has happened to me to make me want to turn this phone on and talk to you. Three things concerning young men. Uh, what happened was, earlier when I left the house to come to work, a young man, uh, well, I stopped at the gas station to get some petrol, and a young man come up to me. I didn't even know that he was homeless, but he was homeless, and he asked me to borrow a dollar. Well, I have a thing about homeless people and borrowing money when you step to me and ask me can you borrow some money from me you will get refused every time because you can't borrow something from somebody you're never going to see again okay now if you humbly ask me for some money and tell me that you're down on your luck or whatever and, and make your make yourself known then I will be gladly to give you I'll be I'll be more than happy to give you some money anyway that happened to me, and the young brother asked me for some money, or can he borrow some money, I refused, but I went inside the gas station and got him a little something to drink, some water, gave him a bottle of water, it's hot as hell out here as I said earlier, then I had a young man ask me for some money at a different location, now this time I was over at this Mexican restaurant called Alberto's, not too far from where my job is, and the same scenario happened, so, uh, you know, it kind of struck me as being odd that twice in one day, two obviously younger men was asking me to borrow some money, again, borrow some money, so this time, I decided to, to do it, but instead of just letting him get the money, I wanted some personal information about him, so I said, hey man, how old are you? After he asked me to borrow the money, and he said he was 21. I said, you're 21 years old out here, out here on the street, man, what's your name? And when I asked him, when I asked him his name, his response was, I don't know. I don't know. That pissed me off, because now I felt like he was trying to con me, you know? You're going to come at me in a position of vulnerability as, as such as to ask me to borrow some money. I'm going to need some information about you, young blood. Now, the third incident that happened to me did not happen today, but it made the, the two incidences brought me back to something that happened to me last week. And... There is, there's a young, there was a young man that, uh, that I frequent all the time who works at this convenience store, and he's one of those young men, he's got to be around maybe 30, I don't know, but he obviously has a presence about him because you can kind of see it, you know, you can kind of see when somebody has a, a presence and, and how they move and how they carry themselves, he, anyway, he always, you know, he looks up at me, and I'm a very quiet guy. I don't, I, I try, I always walk around in stealth mode, even when I'm all the way out in the open. I don't talk much, and I don't say much when I talk. Uh, so, for some reason, he took a liking to me, and he, hey, what's up, OG? What's up, OG? You know, we chop it up from time to time, and I can tell that he's a, a hard worker because he's always doing something around there. He's always straightening up the cigarettes he's always sweeping the floor or 
running, rushing over to the register to, to help bring up someone, you know. And one particular night last week, he came and asked me, well, he looked troubled, and he asked me, hey, OG, hey, what you getting? I got some, went in there and got some sparkling apple cider and some, some flaming Hot Popcorn. So I said, oh, I'm getting some of this, and I told him what I, what I was getting. He said, hey, man, don't even worry about it. You ain't got to pay for it, OG, man. I got you. So you, you, you seriously? Thank you. You know, I appreciate the gesture, you know. So after I got it, he said, can I, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, okay. You know, he wanted to talk to me outside in private, which was striking. You know, this is something that I don't see many men doing. But he, he wanted to talk to me outside, and he asked me, hey, OG, man, what do you do? I said, well, you see that thing over there? I pointed to a truck, which I'm sitting in now. I said, that's what I do. And he said, uh, well, can you tell me how to get into that game? I said, oh, you want to become a driver? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, I want to ask you something. Why? And he proceeded to tell me that he was working two jobs, both of them were grueling, and he only was able to get a few hours of sleep every day. He was juggling having a girlfriend and two kids, you know, and he was really struggling trying to maintain, period. So he wanted to find another outlet as far as getting involved and making some more money. And so I said, so let me ask you something. Are you wanting to get involved in this industry for money? I says, because you're talking to a former trainer. And one thing I always ask people who sit beside me or in, in the driver's seat that I'm training is, why do you want to get in this game? And if they say money, I always say, well, you in the wrong, you in the wrong profession. Of course, you can make a lot of money being a, 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 a driver of a commercial vehicle. But that should not be your motivation. The motivation should be to obtain a career. Because that's what this is. When you get involved in this, you are no longer a regular driver. I don't even like to address us as truck drivers. I call us professional drivers. Because what happens is once you get your Class A license, especially if you have your endorsements such as Hazmat and all the rest of them, you get treated a, 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 a lot different when police stop you and when you go to airports. They roll out the red carpet to you, and they, and as far as the airports, the Transportation Security Administration, those guys that check everyone, the baggage claims and all that stuff, and you show your ID, they treat you differently. At least they do over here at LAX. You know, uh, when the police pull you over, they see those letters under your uh, on your license, and they say, hey, man, look, if you were speeding, they say, yo, man, just chill out, okay? It yields you a certain amount of respect. Anyway, back to the young brother. I told him that. I said, look, man, well, you got to understand this is a profession. And you will be known as a professional driver if you get off into this. And I proceeded to break it down to him how he should go about getting in this game. And he thanked me. Not only did he thank me, he hugged me. And I get him, I'm just getting emotional right now because of what I want to lead into next in this video. I want to talk to you young men. And I want to talk to you from a perspective as a father. Now, I don't have any sons. I have all girls. I have three of them. And so the way I perceive young men now, I perceive them as individuals who I am going to have to pass one of my daughters on to. And in order for me to be comfortable with that, I have to I have to know that there's a certain component within you as a man. Because if I pass my daughter to you, you will now become my son by law. And in order for me to feel comfortable with me passing on one of my one of my daughters to you, you have to display certain things, and that's what I want to talk to you about. You have to display work ethic which is something that I've noticed throughout the years that a lot of young men have absolutely low levels of. 
before I got back in the truck, I took a little, I took a little break, and I started working at Target Distribution, which is grueling as fuck. It's hard. It's hard, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. Anyway, I worked in, in a, in a, amongst a team of seven men, all of them younger than me. And it was the most frustrating job, not because of how grueling and difficult the work was and the production was to make, but it was hard because I worked amongst all these young men and I was smoking them. Smoking them. My production was always higher. My work ethic was always more vigorous. I always had a passion to want to treat every single day as if it was a battle. And these motherfuckers that I worked with was so worried about scuffing their shoes or or bleeding or sweating it all, getting their shirts dirty. You know, they want to stand around and do minimum work or hop on a forklift and ride around all night long instead of getting in the trenches and getting dirty. You know, uh, hell, even... Right now in this profession, sometimes I have to get, get in a trailer and unload it. And I can't tell you how many times I've been at some remote location with a bunch of young people working in it. And I get up in that trailer, it's hot as hell. And it, and, and ain't no pallet jacks, so we got to offload it by hand. So what I usually do is I'll go ahead and get the supervisor and tell them to send me five or six or seven men. And we need to form a chain inside the trailer. There's a pallet outside the trailer that we are going to palletize the product that I am delivering to this place. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hand off. I'm starting off, hand it to the next man. They hand it to the next man. They hand it to the next man all the way to the end of the trailer. And then we go ahead and... What's going on? Man? And then we go ahead and, you know, palletize it. The last man palletizes it on the pallet. Man, I can't tell you how many damn times... That I'm in that trailer sweating, and these young men, they just chopping it up. No, no fucking urgency at all. It's like they don't understand that time is money. It's like they don't value time as anything. They, they just waste it. They, they, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm talking about, you young men. What is wrong with you? Look, there, there's no excuse no more. You can't say to me that I was raised by a single mother. I was raised by a single mother. And she wasn't babying me, man. I wasn't sheltered. I was in the streets too. But I wasn't like you. I wasn't coddled. I wasn't babied. I didn't have my mama to go, oh, God, they picking on me, mama. I had to go through things the hard way. I had to get my ass kicked, and I had to kick some ass. I had to develop a perception about this world. The perception of it's all you. It is all on you. It is up to you to make something of yourself. I had to go through it the hard way without... No male training. Now, grateful, I was grateful later in the years to, to be such a goddamn knucklehead that I did run across some mentors. But see, with that, mentorship is something that you deserve when you don't know better. You niggas know better! And that's what I don't understand. You know better. So why the fuck aren't you doing better? We got young men out here, man, homeless, strong, virile, able young men. The two young men that asked me for money, that was way bigger than me. Swole, diesel. Talking about, you man, pitiful. Walking around with your shoulders all slumped over. Pitiful. You know, maybe that's what made, made young blood ask me about that. Because I walk around like this. I walk around like I'm on top of the world. And I don't care who's around me. 
That's how I am, period. You, I can be around street niggas. I can be around CEOs. And I'm the same way. Anyway, I don't want to make this about me. I'm concerned about you young brothers. I really am. Because whether you know it or not, things are getting worse for you. Yo, these women don't know how to maintain no man. And the food and everything that you're digesting, you're digesting as far as music and media is teaching you how not to be a man. I'm, I'm worried about y'all, man. I want you to do better because you know better. I'm not about to get on this, te this telephone and start bawling, crying, but I feel myself well enough. Because I, gen I genuinely love you brothers, man. I'm a black man and I want my brothers to, to succeed. Yo, man, it's time for me to cut this camera off. This is Ebo Sosa. I'm signing off. Thank you for tuning in. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Let's get this work, y'all. Peace.